Hi again. We are going to continue our discussion on organometallics. And in the last video, the first video, we looked at how Grignard reagents, reagents can react with epoxides. In this video, we're going to look at hopefully these other four reactions. And just, just as a reminder, anything that we can do with a Grignard, we can do with an organolithium. If we have time, we'll also do maybe some synthesis or retrosynthesis problems. This is not the only set of reactions, though, that we are going to look at with organometallics. Uh, we will have another video after this one to look at another type of organometallic that we have not seen yet called the Gilman reagent. But for now, let's focus on Grignards and organolithiums and their reactions with carbonyl groups. In uh, unit uh, two, we looked at reactions with aldehydes and ketones. Well, these organometallic reagents can also react with aldehydes and ketones, and it should follow the same pattern that we've seen in the, the previous video, where the Grignard or the organolithium reagent acts like the nucleophile. Okay, and let's start out with. Uh, organometallic plus formaldehyde. It may seem a little bit strange. Why are we focusing on just one uh, type of aldehyde? You'll see that in just a bit. It's because we're going to form a primary alcohol and this is let me just double check. Hmm. Actually, it's a primary alcohol, but also adding a CH2 group. So let's take an organometallic reagent, for instance, this Grignard reagent right here. Just a simple one uh, ethyl magnesium bromide. And for the first reaction, we're going to add a formaldehyde. Formaldehyde is a specific molecule. It's this one, and it will always be that for formaldehyde. It's the simplest aldehyde, and we're going to protonate it. Protonate what? Protonate the alkoxide that we're going to form. And the reaction will give us this. Put a dot, actually, on the carbon that the Grignard reagent is going to attack, and that dot was attacked by two carbon piece. You could draw it like this. Okay. When the Grignard attacks that carbon, the pi bond uh, shifts up to the oxygen to make O minus, and then we protonate it. So what do we do here? We added really a CH2OH group. In the synthesis, when you notice that maybe you're uh, organometallic, but even better yet, the alkyl halide that made the organometallic. Okay. So I am talking a little bit about synthesis because what if we had started with this alkyl halide? You understand that you are going to use magnesium metal to make the Grignard and then you could add your carbon. As before, remember that these are the these reactions are the best ways to make a carbon carbon bond. And what we notice here is that you start out with a, a piece that only has two carbons, and here we ended up with a piece that has three carbons, ending with an OH. Okay. Again, you could use uh, organolithium, but not only could you use organolithium, you could also use an organolithium that has an sp2 carbon. Whoops, you don't see that. An sp2 carbon. So go ahead and. Try this at home. Another way you could write formaldehyde is that. There really is only one organic molecule that fits that molecular formula. Mm, yeah, only one organic molecule. And then two H3O plus. Go ahead and pause the video, write your answer, and then unpause it to double check. OK. If I was to do this on an exam, maybe on a scratch sheet of paper, I would draw out the aldehyde, 
put a dot. That dot is going to be connected to what? To this carbon right here. That carbon right there. We can do a pseudo mechanism, right? You start from the bond. You attack that carbon, and you kick up the pi bond. Ultimately, after the second reaction, you protonate that. So we have this. It's that carbon, the sp2 carbon, attached to the dot, and that dot is connected to an OH. Again, what we added was a CH2OH group, and if we do our analysis, see that's the bond we made. Okay, up here, this is the bond we made. Okay, let us move on to reaction D. It, now this could be any aldehyde except for an aldehyde. And what do we get? We do organometallic plus aldehyde. By the way, I want to uh, draw your attention uh, to the fact that, again, when you have a reaction written out like this, okay, what you're really saying is you're putting everyone, not everyone, but you're putting these two people in the pool and have them react with each other. It doesn't matter that the al formaldehyde is with one and the Grignard reagent is the starter material. You can switch these, okay? Technically, I would consider them both starter materials, okay? Because atoms that are in both molecules end up in the product. That's what I think of as a starter material versus a reagent. Okay, so I'll do that example here where the organometallic is going to be over the arrow. It doesn't make a difference. It doesn't make a difference. So instead of drawing the organometallic, uh, sorry, yep, instead of drawing the organometallic here, I'm going to draw a random aldehyde. And then I'll put my organometallic right here. And I don't think we've done one where it's just a methyl magnesium bromide. Okay. And then as usual, H3O+. Okay. Think about the mechanism. We have this carbon attached to the metal that's nucleophilic attacking this electrophilic carbonyl carbon. When that attack happens, this becomes an O minus, and then we're going to make it an OH. Throw out your carbon skeleton, put the dot. What's being added? It looks like we're adding a methyl group. Okay, you could put CH3 here if you want. You don't have to. And then that oxygen double bond becomes an oxygen single bond, and you protonate it. When you react an aldehyde, besides formaldehyde, with a Grignard or an organolithium, you get a secondary alcohol. Secondary alcohol. Should we do the mechanism for this? I'll do the mechanism for this one, and I won't do the mechanism for the ketone version, but it's identical. Yeah. You have your organometallic reagent attack the carbonyl carbon. Now, the way that I want to draw this, because I like drawing it from the bond, so one way to do this is I'll turn this CH3 group around, show the bond, MGBR. That is essential if you're not using the, the ion, ions. Remember how I said that another way to represent this is CH3 minus and MGBR plus, two ions. But I like the one where you see the covalent bond. The first step in the mechanism, again, is this. And the dot is connected to an oxygen that's now negative. And we have still that H. You don't have to draw it. And we added the methyl group. Now, if you're wondering where the MGBR is, you could make it a salt, or part of the salt. And you could have that. Next is the acid. 
very similar to what we saw with epoxides in the first video. And that's our product. Secondary alcohol, uh, we did create water. Okay. Now you might say, well, uh oh, I thought water was bad when we did Grignard reagents or Grignard reactions. Yeah, it is bad if it was present during the attack. But again, this is the second step where we have acidic water. So the Grignard had done its job already. Now all we're doing is protonating it. All right. Let's do the ketone version. When we reacted with formaldehyde, we got a primary alcohol. When we reacted with any other aldehyde, we got a secondary alcohol. Well, a ketone has two R groups off of the carbonyl. And we're going to add another R group via the organometallic reagent. Meaning that we should get a tertiary alcohol. ketone. I believe you have enough information now to hmm, to uh, predict the product. I'm going to give us phenyl magnesium bromide. Again, you could probably tell that I am partial to Grenier's versus uh, organometallic or organolithiums. But again, you could use organolithium for any of these to replace the organo uh, magnesium or the Grignard reagent. All right. Let me give you a couple of hints, and then I'll let you do your thing. A dot, that's where the Grignard reagent is going to attack. And the other thing is, what is pH? I would draw it out. Oh, it's a Grignard reagent where this carbon is going to attach to this dot. And don't forget, your carbonyl becomes an OH. Using those clues and using your uh, previous knowledge, pause the video, draw the product, and then correct any mistakes that you have when you see my answer. Okay. How should I draw this? I'll draw the ketone part first, knowing that when it was attacked, we get the carbonyl group to be a hydroxyl group. And what attacked? The phenyl group. And the phenyl group is attacking from this carbon, and we have this. The mechanism is analogous to uh, what we saw here. So you should know, when you're given a Grignard reagent, draw that bond between the metal and the carbon next to it. We get a tertiary alcohol. Tertiary alcohol. Let me do one more simple example as a template because I want to use that example to figure out some synthesis problems. Okay. I am going to use organolithium. Um, let's take a very simple ketone, though, like this. Uh, one, the organolithium I want to use is the one that has an isopropyl group. Okay. Do you want to test yourself again? Pause the video, draw the answer then unpause it. If you have any mistakes, correct it with a different colored pen. Okay. Again, I'm trying to show you how I would approach this on an exam, literally how I would do this problem to make sure that I minimize the number of careless errors. Dot. I mean, heck, we could even do like a pseudo mechanism. 
pseudo meaning that I'm not drawing the full mechanism. We have that. We could even say that we have three carbons adding to five carbons. Then go ahead and draw out your product, being confident that you are not going to make any careless errors. It doesn't matter if the isopropyl group is to the right or going down. Um, what is interesting that I didn't realize uh, previously is that in this problem, you know, we're making a chiral carbon, and the organolithium can attack from the front or the back. So I would say, just to a note to myself, that this carbon is chiral with an asterisk, and uh, you form racemic mixture. I'm not going to draw the wedges and dashes. You know that a racemic mixture is a mixture of 50-50 uh, mixture of two enantiomers. So I would draw the R version and the S by you know, making maybe this wedge and this dash, and then the other stereoisomer, this dash and this wedge. Honestly, um, since I do ask my class to do that, let me show you what how I would draw the actual answer. Because to me, well, technically stereoisomers are different molecules, right? They have they're different molecules, so you have different names. How would I draw this? Switch the wedge and dash. Yep, chiral. And um, so that's the full answer with stereochemistry. Now, don't look at the starter materials. If I asked you which bond was made when I reacted a ketone with the organolithium, what carbon-carbon bond was made? See, I'm already having trouble figuring that out because I understand that this dot <clears throat> could have been attacked by any th one of these three carbons, but it was this carbon on the right, right? We added the isopropyl group. Bond A was made, you could say. But if a classmate had no idea what you started with, they could have said, well, maybe I made bond B, or maybe I made bond C. There are actually, in this case, three combinations of ketone with organometallic that could give me this product. Could you play the same game up here? Um, the bond that we truly made was this one. This one's a little bit trickier because we have it cyclic. I'm trying to figure out if it's possible, and I don't think it's possible because for you to make this bond your Grignard and your carbonyl had to be in the same molecule and they would have reacted instantaneously. Bottom line is I wouldn't say there are three different combinations for this molecule. Three different combinations of organometallic and ketone to make this molecule. I'll limit ourselves to non-cyclic tertiary alcohols. And let me show you a classic uh, problem. The classic problem poses a tertiary alcohol and asks the student what are three ways to make it. The question is, or the problem is, make uh, three different ways. Distinctly three different ways. It could still be the same reaction. We are going to use organometallic plus uh, a ketone, because this is a tertiary alcohol, but we're going to use different combinations of those. And the way that I would go about this is you have bond A bond B, and bond C. A little bit crowded, but let's figure out how do I make bond A. If you have a note card or I have a, for some reason, a cocktail napkin, if I wanted to make bond A, my ketone 
would look like this. Okay, just to make sure that the hydroxyl group becomes a carbonyl. And what am I using to attack? I'm using a Grignard reagent that has only one carbon, a methyl magnesium bromide. If I wanted to make bond B, then my ketone would look, look like this. Okay. And then my attacker would look like that, which includes that carbon right here. And then see the same strategy. So to make bond A, my combination would be, I'll, I'll write the ketone first. One, oh boy, I'm already lost. Um, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, dot. And then we have one, two, three. One, oh boy, two, three. So it's a little bit trickier than I thought. Carbonyl group there. Just double check. Again, use your cocktail nap napkin. Cover up the piece that you think did the attacking. Double bond. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, carbonyl and carbon number four. One, two, three, four, carbonyl and carbon number four. Five, six, seven, eight. That looks good. Uh, let me do this in blue. And then methyl grignard or methyl magnesium bromide, and then H3O plus. That should give you this. Forget about the target. Okay, go from scratch. And how would you solve this re reaction? I had a methyl group attack. And then verify, are these two the same? If so, then you were able to make bond A perfectly. Let me try to do bond B without too much hesitation. I think I need my note card or my napkin. Bond B is this one here to the south. OK, good. So my ketone should be pretty easy. One, two, three, four, five, six carbons, carbonyl and carbon number two. One, two, three, four, five, six, carbon number two. My attacker uh, is looking like a three carbon piece that looks like that. And I'll literally draw it with the same pattern as I see up here. Okay, so you know, oh man. Organometallic, and I want to use lithium. It doesn't matter, you could use a Grignard as well. Do you see how I match uh, these three carbons up here and three carbons down here? But make sure that your metal is attached to the carbon that is attacking the dot. Number two, H3O plus. And we have this dot, OH. Hopefully that is the same as that. For combination C, okay, uh, probably do on your own, or do on your own. If you're in my class, this will be one of your practice problems. How do you make bond C using an organometallic and a ketone? Zoom out. Okay, good. Uh, so the this is all about ketones on this page, reaction E. And this is a classical problem, a classic problem. I want one more reaction on here, and that is reaction F. It's going to be a quickie, but I think because it's all analogous, you can handle this. Organometallic plus carbon dioxide, CO2. And this is a great reaction because you could buy carbon dioxide at a supermarket, it's dry ice. And any excess carbon dioxide just evaporates. Okay. The classic reaction here is, and that some of you may do in lab, phenyl magnesium bromide 
You dump chunks of dry ice. You protonate at the end. Before I draw the product, look what carbon dioxide is. It looks like a looks like a dicarbonyl. So you know that your Grignard is going to attack the C and kick up one of the pi bonds to the oxygen. When you protonate it, look what we get. Double bond oxygen, single bond oxygen. But when you protonate, you add that. This is an awesome way, awesome way to make a carboxylic acid. But just remember, when you make the carboxylic acid, you're, ma you're adding another carbon, right? So here you have six carbons. We added a seventh. Your product has, should have seven carbons. Question. How do you make this from an alkyl halide? This is a synthesis problem. Well, you don't see that. Pause, copy, problem. Make this carboxylic acid from a alkyl halide. The key is, look at my dotted line for my template. I added the C, the two O's, and the H. So I really added that piece there. If you need to redraw it, <laughs> We draw it. And this is where the carbon dioxide was added. That's an important analysis because my alkyl halide should only have six carbons. It should only go up to that carbon right there. There's the answer. Oh, you do it. Okay. Um, draw the synthesis. Start from an alkyl halide. Make this carboxylic acid, understanding that we need to convert the alkyl halide into the organometallic, and then react it with carbon dioxide. And how would you format that so the grader won't misinterpret your drawing? Give that a shot, pause the video, and come back when you have you know, either the full answer or at least some of the answer. Okay. The number of carbons is important. There's an alkyl halide. Let me use lithium. Convert it into the organolithium. Okay. It may seem like I'm short. I actually am short of a carbon, but because I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, but here I only have six carbons. But here's the seventh carbon coming. I'm going to put this in parts. So I'm going to react with carbon dioxide first, dry ice. And I get this, O minus. And then the second reaction, uh, you know, when we looked up here, was acid. But it's, it's just a fourth reaction in the synthesis. that okay when you draw your synthesis it's depending on your professor whether you can combine these two not in the same pot but in the same arrow as a one and a two like here my general rule is for a synthesis if one of the steps is a protonation or deprotonation you can combine that with the previous step or the the proceeding step okay so here I could have wrote one co2 and 2 H3O plus, and not worry about drawing this intermediate. Okay. But you can stay on the safe side and draw every single reaction and its intermediate product separately. That's it. Okay, everything is analogous. You're attacking the carbon that's doubly bonded to oxygen to create alcohols, and in this case, carboxylic acid.